Blog Talk Radio. Drop that down! The whole fucking show! Drop that down! The whole fucking show! Damn, damn, a nigga! Damn, damn, a nigga! RVD Radio is back. I know, I know. I feel the energy. Everybody's excited right now because hearing my voice makes it official. I got to know right off the bat. When that song is playing on my side, it keeps fading in and out. Does it do that to everybody? Is it fading in and out? We got to get a new copy anyway because Cushionator has redone that song so many times. And if you watch RVD TV... And you've seen the episode where we prank uh, the masturbator, Chris Masters. You'll notice that there's a, a chair shot straight to my head that is added into the song where he says, a chair shot straight to the brain, straight to the skull, crack, wham, over my cranium. And we recorded the chair shot, inserted it into the song. However, the version I have here on RVD Radio is the old version. You would think I would have a hookup being RVD. I'm going to have to get that from Kush Nader. I'm going to put that on my list. Do I have a list? I should have a list. You know, of all the people that need lists, I should have a list. Not a lisp. I speak, for goodness sakes. I can't have a lisp. So a lot of uh, people believe, call this uh, theology or whatever the fuck you want to call it, that people are basically bad. People are basically uh, bad by nature, and I, I don't want to say that it comes from the Bible for sure, because I'm not an expert in, in understanding the Bible, but I will say, after speaking to my Bible-thumping friend, Eddie O, who I haven't spoken to in a long time, I should call Eddie, but uh, anyway, he, through conversation, 
uh, said something that I'll never forget. You know that all people are sinners, and he may he implied that we should all live with guilt because we all do shit that we know we're not supposed to do, and we should beg the Lord for forgiveness. And uh, you know, if He accepts us, I think then we get into heaven. Otherwise, we burn in hell. Something like that. I don't know. But uh, basically, uh, it, it sums up to bottom line: people are bad, people are evil, people are sinners. Uh, none of us are worthy of being accepted, I guess. I don't know. My theory uh, isn't like that. I think that people are good. Uh, I'm a good person, and I really only understand good people. Sometimes I want to understand uh, bad people just for the sake of understanding. I certainly don't want to think like them, but I notice a huge separation. In fact, if I separate people that think like me from people that don't think like me, I stand alone. And I'm absolutely fine with that. In fact, uh, take pride in that. Your friend Emily is calling SVD. Say hi to SVD. Hi, everybody. Say hi to SVD, everybody. Emily's saying hi to you right now while we're calling. That's very, very rude. Here's here's the thing. I'm going to compare this to drugs, okay? I think drugs are good. Abusers are bad. That's my formula. You heard it here. Drugs are good. People that abuse drugs are doing bad. Now, what's wrong with that? That's the truth. But because pharmaceutical companies want to control the money generated by drugs, they use fear tactics, and they have everybody just thinking drugs are bad. Now, everybody, raise your right hand if when I say drugs you you come up with a, a a bad thought in your head. Like right off the bat, you go, oh, drugs, those are bad. Stay away from drugs. Go ahead, be honest. Raise your hand, motherfuckers. I want to talk to you. Why don't you think for yourself? I mean, what's wrong with just opening up your mind and thinking about it? Chemotherapy, as my wife recently experienced, is a drug. It's a hell of a lot of drugs, and that's what the whole therapy is based on is taking drugs. If you're thinking, well, okay, if you're dying, but otherwise I don't need drugs, okay, fine. If you take cold medicine when you have a cold, I think you're a drug user. You know why? Because you use drugs. Uh, Everybody that can't wait to run out and get their nicotine fix, they think they're not using drugs because of governmental misclassification. They feel better smoking their cigarettes and thinking, well, at least I'm not smoking pot. Well, pot's never killed anybody. There is no overdose. There is no intoxication level, no death ever attributed to marijuana ever. And compare that with one out of two cigarette smokers. And I've been getting some slack. Rob, lay off the cigarette smokers. That's all we got. Okay, I'm not trying to take away your right. I'm just pointing out that you're volunteering to be a statistic. I'm quoting a lot from my blog and my opening. Did you notice that, baby? (laughs) <laughs> Sonia's, <laughs> Sonia's got a uh, colonoscopy tomorrow And she's has to drink this nasty drink right now While she's, while she's fasting So um, pity to you baby It's disgusting uh, But you look so cute drinking it I'm going to look cute in about 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> uh, You know what We look up drug And it is uh, something that alters the, the mind or perception when it's uh, ingested or put into the body. Well, guess what? That means everything is a drug. I'm not saying all drugs are good. I'm not saying there's no exception. Um, You know, I mean, uh, fucking kids sniff paint in paint thinners. Guess what? They're doing drugs. I can't think of any medical use for that, but it's definitely a substance or chemical that changes your brain when it enters your body, right? That makes it a drug. Math, I can't really think of. Too many medical uses uh, for uh, crystal meth, even though the DEA tells me it's a class uh, Schedule II controlled substance, which means that it does have uh, more medicinal value than marijuana. You think somebody needs to catch up to 2009 there? Federal government, substance listings, classifications. So as a role model, as I stand before you, 
and and hope to inspire everybody. I know, baby, but they think I'm standing when I said that. They pictured me like real heroic, like you just ruined it. They pictured me like saluting or standing with my hands on my hips. <laughs> All right, as I sit before you, uh. I give you permission to just think, you know, just for a couple hours while you're listening to my show and then go back to being the, the kind of sheeple that society wants you to be if you so choose, all right? You don't have to think like RVD, but you do have to think. So <clears throat> drugs improve the quality of our life. My dad recently had laser surgery on his hip. Uh, it was something high risk, you know, my brother and sister were freaking out. I can't believe he did that. He was supposed to just get an evaluation and he went, well, you know, good. Hopefully it worked out. Turns out he feels better than he has in a long time. He says that he got some pain pills, uh, but he doesn't like to take pills. So, uh, ask my dad what they are. Cause I know a lot about pain pills. Uh, and I'm, I've always been fascinated with medicine. Uh, it turns out that he's taking five milligram oxycodone, which is just the alternative to uh, hydrocodone. Uh, Vicodin, Norco's having hydrocodone, and the oxycodone is for someone who doesn't take well to uh, hydrocodone. That's a that's a Percocet. Or in multi-strength, it's an Oxycontin, yes, like Rush Limbaugh was addicted to and, uh, and many people. But anyway, my dad says, I don't want to take uh, too many pills, you know. I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, how many you got there? You know, you can get more, you know. And he says, well, I've I've taken two in four weeks. I'm like, Dad, if it helps you, then you should take more. That's what the doctor gives them to you for. And my dad says, well, I just don't feel like I need them. Okay, I understand that. Now, here's where RVD is really going to get you to think. I don't think that you have to need in order to benefit from. Do I need to say that again? I'm not going to. I hope you picked it up the first time. So if it helps the quality of your life, but dad's like, well, I mean, mostly it's just like an annoying pain. Dad, if it helps you, and you to take, you know, one a day, he's like, well, I go, if you take some kind of pride in, uh, you know, not taking pills, then okay, that's your own, that's your own pride system, your own priorities, you know, good for you. I think, you know, if it improves the quality of your life and you know it's in check, I mean, if you're afraid about being addicted, that's all in your head. He goes, oh, no, I know that is, you know, I just, oh, I don't want to intoxicate my liver. No, if you took one a day, you'd be taking so many more than you are now and so many less than the doctor. doctor recommends uh, take one or two every four to six hours or as needed. Um, I think, you know, if he took one a day, if he wanted to, you know, before he plays golf or does his limited physical activity, or maybe afterwards because he doesn't want to be hurt and then overdo it and then have compensation pain from uh, working too much, you know, and that's that's what happens. But uh, anyway, you know, it's his choice, but that's where I stand on on modern drugs. That is uh, where I believe – getting lost trying to read the fucking chats here now. That's Sonia's job, but okay. Holy cow. Um, I'm getting distracted. I need a tweeter. A tweeter? Hey, hey, Tweety, how are you? How are you instant messaging me right over everyone else's chat? How is uh, Diva Tweety doing that? Um, I got a bunch of calls, so I'm going to go to the lines, and I'm going to see what other people think about uh, exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, you know what? As you always know, I stand my ground. You know, there are abusers, and abusing anything is bad. Abusing the fucking telephone is bad. Um, Abusing yourself when you're spanking the monkey, man. Hey, keep it under control, man. Not too much, right? But use, appropriate use, that's why we live longer. What if we didn't have penicillin? We'd all be living till the age of 35. That would be our life expectancy. I mean, uh, we already got population control, uh, you know, with the cigarettes, so we don't have to worry about overpopulating the planet. Know what I'm saying? Agree or disagree? I'm going to go to Mr. Michael Porter from California. What's up today, Michael Porter? RVD. Welcome back to RVD Radio, my friend. Thank you. I was looking forward to this one. I was looking forward to talking about this and also just uh, getting back on the radio and uh, it's putting out my vibe. Uh, use versus abuse. Uh, well, uh, I've never used recreational drugs. 
I have to use uh, prescription drugs, uh, but I don't abuse. You know, I take them as directed. Uh, so I don't know whether you would call me a good boy or a bad boy. Well, see, that's just the thing. It's not me, but it's uh, it's other people. So you take it as prescribed by a doctor only. Here's what comes to mind. I was sitting on an airplane next to this guy beside me that was, like, wincing in pain during the flight. He's uh, uh, he's making this noise, you know, breathing through his teeth. And he's, like, you know, going from one hit to the other. And I'm like, you know, what's your problem? He's like, oh, I just I got this pain in my knee. You know, it's just... It always bothers me, you know, and uh, I'm like, well, dude, I mean, you could probably get a script for some uh, pain pills. And he says, oh, I'm a doctor. I said, well, you're a doctor. You can take care of that. How come you don't just write yourself a script for, like, some Vicodin? He goes, "Uh, no, because I'm too afraid I'd get addicted. That stuff's addictive. Okay, what this is is fear in effect. Because of fear... Because being afraid that you could get addicted is no reason, unless you know something about you. I mean, if you if you're an addictive person, you know, you go to you go to the meetings, or you've had to kick a lot of shit behind, and you just know, like, oh, you would pick that up as a habit. Okay, that's an educational choice. You got some information going into it, but. Just because you're afraid of something, because you've heard that other people abuse it, that's no reason for you to not use it, especially when it, you could benefit in such a way. That doctor thought that even proper use would be abuse, and, and it really just feeds into the fear. Uh, you know, people that just, you know, automatically think, oh, no, pain pills are bad, you know. Um, they think well, the same thing about the he, ought, he ought to know that, you know, with the proper use and the proper dosage, you know, it should be all right. Well, I agree. He ought to know, and all the IVD listeners are going to know that that's how I feel after listening to tonight's show. I don't believe in psychological addiction whatsoever uh, because uh, I'm a person, and I know for a fact everything I've ever taken, if I want to quit, then I just quit. The only reason to take is because you want to take it, so I think you're just lying to yourself. If you say, well, I really want to quit, I really don't want to take this, but I can't stop, I'm working on it. Well, no, you're not. You're taking it because you want to take it, you know. Um, so drugs are good. Thank God for modern medicine. You know, keep the inventions coming. Uh, find this, uh, uh, find us a cure for for cancer that's not that's not uh, alternative medicine. I mean, all over the news for the last few days was the case of the mother from Minnesota who took her 13 year old boy down to Mexico because she did not want her son to receive chemotherapy treatment. Interestingly enough, the court ordered the treatments and ordered her to bring the son back. So she was missing. It was a big deal. Uh, I'm surprised the court could order that, um, you know, because it's her and her son and her beliefs, you know, and, uh, but it's definitely the best thing. And I know that because I know, you know, that uh, with he had uh, uh, limp, um, Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma, and, and I know that, you know, that would uh, benefit from him. And the dad, the dad was on the news pleading, you know, please bring him back while we still have time to save him, you know. Well, they finally found him. 13-year-old kid, they're trying to say it was his decision, too. But come on, you're 13 years old. You're, you, you know, your decision. You're not old enough to make that decision. Oh, I want some candy. That's all you're thinking about. You know? Um, so anyway, the, uh, that's uh, that's a case where the mom didn't believe in the drugs associated with chemo. She wanted to go to uh, an alternative, uh, some homeopathic uh, bullshit, you know, which a lot of people say uh, does work. But when it comes down to uh, your life on the line, that's a lot different than just, uh, you know, trying to get better moving out of your bowels. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I mean, stay, on, stay on the chemo until or unless you do find something, uh, you know, alternative, you know, for it. You know, it, it's, it's, it's one thing, you know, to, uh, to try, if you choose to look for natural remedies, hell, it all comes from leaves anyway, but if you, if you choose to, uh, to, to live, you know, taking more alternative medicine, and hey, that, that's fine, but... When it comes to a doctor's recommendation, I'm sorry, but I'm going with the doctor. Uh, modern science and, and um, all the studies that they do year by year, we advance to uh, incredible, incredible heights. I mean, look, look what they're doing. I mean, they can basically uh, take your heart out and give you a new one like the Tin Man from Oz, you know. Yeah. And they weren't doing that a few decades ago. Uh, keep the science going, and if the doctor says you need something, and you're walking away from it saying, oh, no, I'm going to go chew on some... Uh, some walnut branches instead. Well, you know, I mean, you're you're risking your life, and if it's your your son with you too, you're risking uh, someone else's life. 
Yeah, we'll look at uh, like Bret Hart when he had an artificial knee put in, a titanium knee. He's running up and down the stairs now. He couldn't do that before, you know, not at least not since the stroke. Drugs are part of surgery too. You don't mm-hmm. have surgery without uh, without having the drugs. So, so anyway, uh, Michael Porter, you helped uh, help me out with my recent article that I wrote that you can see at cannabisculture dot com. I, uh, I, I read that. Champions. Did you did you take a look at that picture? Yeah, I saw the two pictures of you. Uh, you know, one with the rice krispies and one with the rice krispie or the cornflakes and the rice krispie treats. Were those uh, pictures of uh, the boxes I sent you? Um, the Rice Krispie Treats were indeed yep. the boxes that you sent me. Very cool, very cool. Yep, and uh, yes, you can I, I that. did read the article. You, everybody can see that at CannabisCulture.com. Uh, you can also look at um, MySpace, MySpace uh, slash Five Star Comics, and you can see it on the comments page. Uh, T, my number one fan, posted this huge picture of me with my bola buds. <laughs> Looks pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty awesome. Yep. Uh, be- before I go... I just wanted to say we all missed you at WrestleFest in Newark, California. Uh, well, okay, yeah, I appreciate that. I wish I could have gone. Uh, when when you see me not hyping up an event on my own website, there's usually a reason for it, you know, and that one was looking shaky. Uh, it, it was worth it, you know. Uh, making the movie was an incredible experience. I'm going to have one of the guests on in a little while. This is the big bald dude from uh, Ocean's Eleven that George Clooney brings in as a friend and has him uh, beat him up. Remember that guy? Scott Schwartz? Scott Schwartz is going to be on IVD Radio in a little Not while. little Scotty Schwartz from the toy. Not that little guy from Christmas Story <laughs> in the toy. And, uh, he wants to make it very, very clear that he's not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, cool. All right, thanks for calling in, uh, Michael Porter. Always good to talk to you. I right, will talk with you again soon. All righty. I'm going to be moving on. And, uh, by the way, we also have a bunch of guests. Mr. Rowdy Rowdy Piper will be calling in shortly. Uh, that he's a first-time RVD radio guest. Very excited. Sonia, you were, uh, he's one of the guys that you kind of feel like a little kid around when you see him, right? He is, yeah. Him and Sergeant Slaughter. Whenever we're backstage, it's just these sides of Slaughter or Roddy Piper. She remembers being a little girl. and was it, It's probably your, your brother probably had the rubber, yeah. yeah. Those are the ones with the, the the ring that came with it, yeah. Yeah, that was probably my first exposure, too. I remember Big John Studd, Iron Sheik, the rubber. You know there's an RVD figure like that. When, where the fuck is our, our, our classics uh, RVD figure and our rubber, whatever the hell it's called? I can't remember what that one's called. It's not a Hasbro, I don't think. But I've seen them on the Internet, and uh, Jack says yet to send me. Do you think I would have a hookup being RVD? You would think. Come on, baby, that can't taste that bad. <laughs> it tastes worse than Patron margaritas. You love Patron margaritas. I know, but you think they taste horrible. Well, I do, and I'll take your word on that one too. Okay. Uh, maybe if I have to. <laughs> maybe if I have to. Um, does that change your uh, your perception? Here's drug, a substance that has a psychological effect when ingested or otherwise introduced into the body, in particular a medicine, a pharmaceutical preparation, or a substance taken for its narcotic or stimulant effects, often illegally. See, now I'm just looking up the definition of a drug. Why does it have to put often illegally on the definition? Does that have anything to do with the definition of drug? That's the kind of shit that bothers me. They have people automatically thinking bad when they hear the word drug. It's right there, fucking Webster. Really iMac Webster. <laughs> <Let's> be, <laughs> that drug that you're drinking is bad. Yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> very, very bad. It's going to do very bad things to me, too. Um, there's probably not a lot of, uh. lot of need for that on the black market, either, I'm, I'm going to assume. <laughs> <laughs> Sandman should be calling in. Uh, Sonia made this assimilation earlier. She said Sandman is kind of like the... Uh, um, Matt Damon joke on Jimmy Kimmel every night where he says, uh, "We're supposed, uh, apologies to Matt Damon, we didn't have enough time. He says that every night, even though Matt Damon's never on the show. In case for some reason you don't watch Jimmy Kimmel because you like that guy with the British accent better. Um, I don't. But uh, Sandman, believe it or not, he really is supposed to call tonight. And in fact, he has his own show tomorrow on Blog Talk Radio. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on a show because he's going to be talking about marijuana 
very important time for me right now to educate everybody as I want to see legalization pass through to stimulate our economy, not just for the good old U.S. of A., but I want to do my part to try to keep California from going bankrupt, which is predicted to do realistically, like for real. Uh, it's time for Californians to pull their heads out of their asses and just learn the truth, man. There's no reason opposing ending prohibition and it will bring in like a two billion dollar surplus into our fucking economy that can't hurt that can't hurt and there's no reason not to so june 4th svd and i will be going to the playboy mansion party marijuana policy project i'm going to be doing the red carpet doing all the media and this is what i need because you guys saw me on geraldo a couple times you know that i need a bigger platform to speak uh so i'm going to have cameras in my face talking about something I know more than most people you're going to run into will be able to know. Okay, so uh, here we go. Bass Boulder from Wrestlers United Against Steroids and Drugs. He's on the line right now, which is cool, because I asked him if he would be a guest and call in to talk. This website, Wrestlers United Against Steroid and Drugs, they've got the best intentions uh, they've left a comment or two on my MySpace in which I, I, I um, commented back to them because they said, if you know a wrestler or anyone who is using drugs, please contact us. I said, in a comment back, if you know someone who is using drugs, leave them the fuck alone. If you know someone that is abusing them, then by all means help them out. You listeners, you can hear the difference, right? There's use and there's abuse, but people are afraid and they, they give in to that fear and they automatically think drugs bad, drugs bad. Well, okay, there is abuse and that is bad. Abuse of anything is bad. This uh, particular uh, website, and I'm going to go to Bass Boulder in just one second when I'm done introducing the story behind this, uh, they said something about wrestlers dying from steroids. I said, okay, name one wrestler that's died of steroids, because I know of zero. Their answer was Nancy Benoit. Okay. RVD radio listeners, RVD blog readers, uh, anybody, RVD TV watchers, anyone that has uh, heard me talk about the issue with the Benoit tragedy knows that I am also part of the Sports Legacy Institute founded by Chris Nowinski, who actually studied Chris Benoit's brain with Chris's dad's permission. They found that due to multiple concussions, brain damage, it caused a dementia-like effect, which is uh, the, uh, an answer, a possible solution to what could have caused the craziness that happened over that weekend. Now, steroids cause sometimes a bit of a rage, especially to someone that's already really aggressive. And what that is, is you heat up. Wham! You go from bottom to top. Your thermometer goes through the roof instantly, and, and your common sense doesn't kick in before you just feel like screaming or punching. or rah! You get like this moment, like a hot flash. That's what a steroid rage is, that someone that abuses steroids might possibly uh, feel. They may actually experience this. That's not the same thing as spending a weekend to, uh, to tie up, strangle your wife, uh, the next day strangle your boy, hang out uh, over the weekend, and then eventually hang yourself. That's something that would be due more to depression and brain damage. And because Chris Nowinski studies not just Chris Benoit's brain, but the brain of everybody that he, uh, that he can get a hold of that has had um, contact, had uh, conditions, like uh, he's, getting, he's getting the mixed martial artist. Uh, before Benoit, he had been studying and comparing the brain damage between boxers and football players who all similarly went out with uh, paranoia, not acting like themselves, uh, super depression, and then, and then most, most often suicide. I have, in fact, donated my own brain to be checked out. Like Chris Benoit, I've had way more many concussions than I could possibly count. Welcome to the show, Bass Boulder. Hello, Rob. Thank you for having me on. And you've made some really good comments. We are going to leave them up. I've made sure that the other person involved, we do, we do leave them up. Is you have you've you've helped us out a lot, and you are right. It is it is the uh, it is the um, the abuse. It's the mixture of the 
cocaine, the painkillers, and other stuff, and the roids that's that's killing us. It's yeah, I I personally sad, have lost I don't know twenty or thirty close friends. And even five or six of them that would be, you know, here with me right now that would stay in my house, my close brothers that I would drive with on the road, dead at a young age, you know, know. And almost always, almost always the drug stoma is involved. It does not get enough attention. S-O-M-A, it's a muscle relaxer. And in, I would say in 95% of the wrestler's deaths when they die from the wrestler's cocktail, Soma is like the biggest part, and I really wish more attention would be put towards that. In less on, on what? What is it called? Soma. S O M A. Okay, Soma. That's what. Yeah, I mean. brother. This is the drug of choice. Wrestlers, uh, wrestlers have themselves convinced they need it. It's a relaxer. Uh, I myself used Muscle to relax. abuse. Before uh, before Louis Piccoli passed away, I was abusing solos as well as some painkillers, and I got to a point where I was up to thirty a day. What made oh, me feel geez. better? My safety gauge was the fact that uh, Louis Piccoli would take close to a hundred a day. I had no idea that you could die from it until Louis passed away. And, and then I was scared, you know, and at first I, I thought in my brain, oh, my God, I've been taking every, you know, every day for so long. I've been taking drugs. I'm going to have to go to rehab. I, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. It, it was all in my brain. All I had to do was quit. Sonia said, you know, you're not going to take anything now, are you? And I was like, no. And I just fucking stopped just like that. That's why I don't believe in uh, psychological addiction. Your brain is the strongest machine in the fucking universe. I think it creates everything, you know, that comes from your vibrations and brings everything into your life. Uh, addiction is an excuse. People like to say, well, you know, uh, I'm addicted. You understand. Just so they can give themselves some slack and have you understand, too, because most people think, you know, they can relate because they think they're addicted. So there have Soma been studies, is killer. There have been studies done on mice about addiction. I mean, addiction does exist. Believe it or not, it does exist. I can believe in physical addiction because I understand that if you take a substance that alters your own chemical substance, it becomes part of the part of the fortitude. And if you take that substance out, it'd be kind of like kicking the leg out from your table. It's not going to be balanced uh, until it's replaced. I understand physical, mental. It's all in your fucking brain. Uh, well, I know, some you people know do that, suffer from it. It's, it's everybody's brain chemistry is different, brother. It's uh, some people have it, some people don't. Are you telling some me people that some don't. people some people can use their brain more than other people? Yeah, yeah. Well, see, that, that may or may not be true, but if that's the case, then then I'm a fucking genius, and that could be the case too. <laughs> I, I know that we're all wired different. Uh, but I know there's uh, people in Africa that put themselves in a state of mind so they can walk on hot coals because the mind overcomes the body that much. And that's just like one small example. Uh, it, you know, my, my parents got hypnotized to quit smoking cigarettes. Anything a hypnotist can do to you, you can do it yourself because that's just your own brain. Bless you, baby. Thank you. That's, just, uh, that's just your own brain. Um, you know, uh, I, from personal experience and being on this planet for, uh, you know, 38 and a half years, I do not understand uh, what it's like to feel like a substance is stronger than me. Anything that I take is because I want to take it. Anything that I don't take, I don't want to take it. I've never had something where I go, oh, you know what, I really don't want to do this, but here it goes and put it in my mouth or lit it up. So... All right, Bash. Well, you know, uh, you guys, you guys definitely have good intentions. You want to help people out. Yep. I want to help from now on, out. From now on, it will be. I will when I put the emails. It will be my do the post. It will be uh, the abusers. It will be if you're having problems with abuse. Okay, I appreciate that, and I think that that helps separate, uh, you know, the truth from the fear. Because people are brainwashed to be afraid of uh, of, of all drugs. That's something that. I think it started with Nixon in, in 1970 when he started the Substance Classification Act and started the, the war on drugs. People are, are afraid uh, of all, and then there's certain drugs, you know, like steroids. Wow, do they get a bad rap? And obviously, uh, a lot of wrestlers and athletes in general, weightlifters, a lot of them, they abuse them, of course. 
But let's say you've got a wasting away disease, like uh, like say you uh, say you got AIDS and you're wasting away, you're 70 pounds, you got no appetite. If the, if you can take drugs like marijuana and steroids and you can have an appetite, feel good, and be stronger, why the fuck wouldn't you? Am I right? Yeah, you're right. Right. So, but automatically people think, oh, steroids should should all be buried and, and kicked off the planet, and you know, all pot and steroids should both be put on an asteroid shot into outer space and just blown up. <laughs> That's no, the, it's, it's the abusers. Uh, the guy from the Russell that was selling the steroids to Mickey Rourke back in February, he was busted for by he was chased down by the New York State Police for he had they, when they caught him, he had a hundred thousand dollars grand in his in, on his person. And between the two ho- his two houses, they found 1,500 bottles of antibiotic steroids. The problem is it's not being controlled. People are just they're just selling it, and people are using it um, just crazily. I got a call a few weeks about a week ago. I've had 70 calls. Uh, we now work with the National Suicide Hotline because we've had 12 wrestlers call the the hotline. It's for it's for uh, people who are having trouble with this. With the stuff, the painkillers, the drugs, the alcohol, the um, the roids, they're abusing them. Uh, the number is 734-961-7548. It's totally confidential, but we did have a young female wrestler contact us. That was, uh, she's married to another wrestler. Can't say her name or location or anything like that. But she, uh, she said that her husband had started doing roids about five months ago, and he'd never been violent, and about a week before, about a week before this this call, she said uh, he had beaten her up and then raped her. Wow, so rape, raped his own wife, right? Yep, and a roid, she thinks it was a roid rage. I've had roid rage. I almost killed someone in a roid rage. It, it, it comes in a flash, and only lasts for a for 30 seconds max, but it don't take 30 seconds to pick up a weapon. Well, that's uh, thanks for putting that phone number out there in case anybody listening wants to call in and get advice for uh, themselves or somebody that well, they know. Um, yeah, is it is it some therapist on the other line, or is it just somebody from experience? You know, willing just to someone from experience. I've I've done all, I've done it all, brother. I've done it all, man. And uh, it's just someone. I really don't counsel them, but I try to put, put them. In, Contact with someone that can that they can go find help if they need to. Right on. But well, I'm uh, just an open ear, brother. I'm just open ear. Okay. I'm tired well, of seeing after it, I, after Sherry Martel. I'm just I'm tired of seeing I'm tired of seeing us fall. As am I. As, us. It's always shocking to me when uh, when when my fellow wrestlers don't get the message when you I see them yep. still. Uh, tempting death, you know, when we're talking about someone that just fucking died, happens all the time, and I often, you know, don't know uh, how to help them myself. Uh, I stand for something that they don't feel comfortable around anymore because of that. Um, you know, stay on the line, Beth. Uh, we're going to be hanging out taking some other calls. I'm going to go to RVD Radio's official law representative, Officer X, and as I hit his theme music here... You better be there, Officer X. What's up, brother? <laughs> How are you doing? Good. What's happening, my man? Welcome back to RVD Radio. Thank you. Nice to be back on RVD Radio. Dude, we're already like 40 minutes into it, man. It's crazy. Can you believe I tried to do this in one hour before? Impossible. Let me ask you something in the line of the discussion of today. Out of everybody that uh, you ever have to arrest, you know, whether it's for, um, uh, whether it's for, um, uh, domestic abuse or whether it's out on the streets, you know, someone crazy, what would you say is the, the drug, um, that you, you least like to run into somebody on because of how fucked up they are or because of the way they act on it? Alcohol. I, I thought you were going to say that. Yep. Yep. By far. Yeah, By it uh, I mean, it's responsible for uh, most of the uh, car crashes, like 60% of murders. Uh, at least it's in their system. Whether it's responsible for it is really just uh, wording something to try to manipulate the way you're thinking. So let's just say it's involved in. And it's the most socially acceptable. Like, everybody drinks. If you yep. don't drink, like you're a weirdo. Yeah, yeah, weirdo. 
The um, yeah, yeah, booze is booze is the biggest problem. Everything uh, I'd say probably eighty percent of the people we deal with in bad ways have to do with alcohol or drugs, and most likely alcohol. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy to think that outlaw, or excuse me, the alcohol was outlawed until nineteen thirty four. During uh, during prohibition, uh, between 1920 and 1934, people still wanted to drink. They would just get together and do it uh, in special secret places, much like they do with marijuana now. Um, except uh, whereas the money goes to the uh, to the underground, to the streets uh, with marijuana now, um, the alcohol was big business with uh, mafia. You know, Al Capone uh, made his living off of bootleg and moonshine, and uh, there were several uh, gangsters back then. In the early 30s, they thrived off it. Um, we're seeing marijuana uh, people getting busted, and they're considering legalizing it, ending marijuana prohibition, like they did with alcohol, stimulate the economy, put that money into the system instead of on the streets. Uh, it, it's very, it's very comparable. But alcohol um, is way, way worse. We have over 150,000 deaths in America alone every year, straight up from uh, intoxication, just from drinking themselves to death. It's a fucking, but it's, you know, it's the most socially acceptable. And I don't want to take anyone's rights away, you know, from making adult choices. That That's their right. But uh, everybody that drinks that says drugs are bad, they don't do drugs. Officer X, aren't they doing drugs? Yeah, alcohol is a drug. And I hope it's the same thing. I mean, it impairs your decision-making and your, your motor functions and it you know, alters your state of consciousness. It's absolutely 100% a drug, but from... For some, I don't know why it's so socially acceptable, because some can handle it and some can't. But I think where you're, you're a marijuana advocate most of the time, there's huge differences between alcohol and marijuana. And, and number one is you can develop a physical dependence to alcohol, which you can't to marijuana. And, and, uh, and, and it's, um, it, it being, it, I'm, not, I'm not a marijuana advocate by any stretch of the imagination, but I think booze gets a free pass in our society because it's taxed and it's legal. Right. I'm glad. Yep. I, I I couldn't agree with you more. I'm glad you put that into words for me. Uh, and it does, you know. And uh, just like anything, if you abuse it, then of course there's going to be negative consequences, uh, as there always are if you abuse anything. So, um, you know, uh, it, it's it's incredibly common to to have a drink, have a few drinks. Uh, some people say, well, if you legalized marijuana, people would be, like, driving while they're smoking, and they'd be irresponsible. Hey, there's never been terms set for responsible marijuana toking, so we can't say what irresponsible marijuana toking is. There's nothing to compare it to. If it was cool to, uh, to, to blaze up at the water cooler when everyone else is lighting up and getting their nicotine fix, then, uh, then that same guy wouldn't have to smoke on the way home to, to cope with the assholes he just got away from, you know? There's no standard set, so you can't automatically go from zero to, well, that's, that's irresponsible, you know? There's no responsible. Hey, you got the drunk monk with you this week or no? No, I was the monk earlier when I texted you, but the monk is listening. He's, a, he's in the app. He's listening. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I'm going to go to my next guest, Officer X, uh, Best Bowler. You're welcome to... Hang out as much as you want. I got a bunch of cars as I usually do. This next one, first time RVD radio guest, and I'm super stoked to have him on the line. Thanks for calling in, Mr. Rowdy One, Rowdy Piper. Thank you for having me. I'm a big fan of you, Rob. You're a, you're a good man. I had the wow. pleasure of having dinner with you and your lovely wife, and uh, you uh, you're a pure kind of guy. So thanks for having me. Right on. I appreciate that. And uh, that's uh, that's one thing I said earlier on the show. When I left WWE, it was because I wanted to use my brain. I don't, I couldn't figure out how to do both at the same time. So people in, <laughs> so people in WWE, like in the office, they don't know the real outspoken RVD that, with integrity, you know, that speaks uh, I'm, and and lives by things that I say and. Uh, and, and I take very seriously the inspiration and the, um, the impact I have on people. I want to push them in the right way. Uh, you mentioned my comedy. I don't know why or where you saw it, Roddy, but you mentioned on the phone you'd seen my comedy the other day. At that uh, BTW event that I missed out a couple weeks ago, uh, Kirk White, the promoter, mentioned that Pat, um, Pat in the office there that, uh, that I had done stand-up comedy, and he was like, Really? 
Huh, I, I can't picture him doing that. Well, of course not, because they only saw me with a frown on my face. Yeah, I understand that, but you were great. You were. I, I, I think that it's uh, something that's inside you and your personality shines, and that's why you have a radio show that's so popular. Um, and it's great when you branch out. You know, I branched out at the height of my career to movies because that was the right timing uh, and did they live. And with wrestlers just in general, you know, uh, don't, don't be so much in the box. You know, if you're a wrestler, professional wrestler these days, you probably have a lot of charisma and a lot to offer in many different fields. So without preaching at all, but, you know, hey, guys, look all around you. Don't get in the box. Don't, don't live in that tunnel. Thank you for saying that, Roddy. That is my message. That's like the deepest message. I have to sum up all the breaths I, I spill on uh, RVD TV, RVD Radio, on my blogs. I mean, the message behind all that is think for yourself. Don't be afraid to use that brain. You know, everybody's a follower. Uh, Roddy, you probably don't know this. I just got back from filming my first uh, action movie. Um, I've been in a few other movies, but this was starring Rob Van Dam. It was like a huge deal. Lionsgate is distributing it. It was called Wrong Side of Town, and uh, and I was the man. It was like starring Rob Van Dam. I just finished it. We're already we're rolling into part two, uh, probably at the end of June. That is fantastic. I, that, I I would love to come to the premiere. That'd be awesome. I had a great time. I had a blast. Batista was part of it. Ja Rule, who's a hip-hop artist. He's got a lot of fans. Omarion, super cool. I kicked both their asses, by the way. Stormy, <laughs> <laughs> Stormy Daniels was there from Vivid Entertainment, so there's going to be a lot of cross-interest from uh, different fields of fan groups, and it was awesome. had a great time doing it. So I know you know a lot about that. Maybe we'll be working together someday. That uh, would be a blast. Did you get into your character? <sighs> You know, here's the thing about that. The character was written and developed for me by a guy that's one of my friends that knows me really well. Uh, Dave cool. DeFelco was the writer and director, and he hangs out with me a whole lot. So everything, all the dialogue, basically the whole character was almost exactly me. So that's why I think maybe I could pull it off. The difference being to explain why he was a badass, they wanted him to be uh, ex-Navy SEAL, and I'm about as far from uh, military as you can get. You know, I don't even like holding a gun, so so that's a stretch. I doubt if I'll pull that off to anybody that was in the military that watches that they're going to say I did everything wrong, probably, but, but that was just a small part of the story. Besides that, he's a badass dude that can kill anybody, but he's really cool and calm, you know. Um, yeah, well, that's it's, a very smart way to go into your first movie. Very smart. Uh Playing yourself uh, with just maybe just uh, a little love. You know, even if you play, uh, uh, we'll say, a bad guy in the movie, uh, a bad guy, when you're playing him, you, he must have some redeeming qualities. So the audience is hoping that he won't do the bad thing. Uh, if he's just straight bad guy, straight down, down the line, just kicks everybody and hates everybody. There's, the audience doesn't get into it. If the audience thinks there's a redemption quality in him, and then he does, then, then they can feel for the bad guy. Much as in our sport, uh, you know, if you if you were portrayed as a as a bad bad fellow and and kicking butt, you have to have a redeeming quality for that audience to even pay attention to you. And that that's something that a lot of guys have missed out on. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe they've just never been told that. Right, but it's good that you related that to the business of wrestling because I've had a lot of uh, younger-than-me guys try to copy my moves, but they just throw the moves together, and they have no idea why the audience doesn't involve their emotion into it, and they don't care about the match. You know, They don't understand. I added extreme to an already good match. I didn't use it in place of. In a good match, of course, has the psychology to uh, to get the crowd involved and care about what's going on. That's a damn good comparison I always try to get across. Roddy, uh, tonight uh, we talk about everything on this show. You know, tonight's subject, the topic matter that I'm discussing is drugs. And from a personal passion, I'm a believer in drugs. Modern medicine helps uh, people live longer. Uh, you know, I mean, it fights off uh, fatal diseases. Uh, and everybody is tied in into automatically thinking they're like brainwashed into being afraid. And when they hear the word drugs, 
they automatically think bad. And I know it's a kid's world, and, and a lot of people raise, uh, they live life according to um, looking out for the best interest of the kids, which I do not. Um, but, you know, a lot of people that drugs, bad, drugs, bad. How about this? I think drugs are good. I think abuse is bad. And that's my message for tonight. Do you have any opinion on that? Well, yes, uh, it's very interesting because if you go to a hospital, they call it medication. And that's a good thing. It's medication. It's good for you. If you go to a hospital, they say, well, here's your drugs. They never do that. It's all of them the phrasing of the word. If you're called a character in wrestling, well, the reason you're called a character is they can depart you uh, from, your own, from your own heart and say, well, what would your character do? I've never been a character. I play the bagpipes and wear a kilt, and when it comes to, yeah, there's so many wonderful medications out there that can help people. I'm one. I had cancer. So here we go. I got cancer, and I go into the hospital, and at the same time, they tore out some backbones, put me on the rotisserie five days a week for four weeks. Now, if they had said, well, we're going to give them all these drugs, you know, people would look at that, oh, that's bad. No, we're just giving them medication. Well, that medication that I got saved my life, but boy, it were some bad drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as you know, my wife uh, can relate firsthand with uh, fighting off cancer with the drugs, oh. and uh, and we brought that up earlier as well. You know, that's uh, it's a strong it's a strong point. You know, drugs are made for medication, and they work. That's why people take drugs. Abuse abuse of anything is going to give bad consequences. That's why it's called abuse. As you know, Terry Funk one time said said something that I always. Uh, rings in my head, you know, you're the captain of your own ship. Um, sometimes in life, as life goes along and you've got dark times, you must have a light at the end of the tunnel. Mine is my family, and that's what keeps me going. And uh, if, if I hurt, I go to the doctor and I get whatever it is that makes me feel better for the time. I am very responsible with what I do. One, one of the things that people have said about me is, uh, I did Jimmy Kimmel a little bit, and they were saying, oh, Piper was drunk. You know, I have never drank before my matches. I hated it. It just doesn't work for me. But my point there is, what you're saying, Rob, is drugs are good. Yeah, drugs are good in the right place. What, what happens is the people that listen and, and have the microscope, especially in our business, they come up with all these scenarios <laughs> with no base for nothing, they put them out on the Internet, and the next thing you know, everything is true because it's written down. Well, that's a bunch of baloney. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Yep, that, very well put, very well put. Hey, Roddy, have you got time to uh, take a few calls? Sure. You're, I, I gave you my word. I'm here for you, man. Awesome. Appreciate it. I'm going to go to Matt Denton because he's calling all the way from the U.K. Matt, you better have something good for Piper. <laughs> Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Yes. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing excellent. I'm doing excellent, Matt. How are you tonight? I, I'm doing well. I just wanted to say to Roddy, everybody in the chat room, including myself, has a very, very, very deep respect for you, and we love you, man. Well, that thank you. That thank you very much. I, I, you don't know how much I appreciate that. I've been a lone wolf for Rebel my whole life. And sometimes, at the end of the day, when by the time the story gets mis twisted around, you know, it, it hurts. It hurts me because I, I, I'm real. I have a heart. Uh, I'm an emotional guy. And the fact that you would say that and see through all the others, um, it's one of the nicest comments that a man like I can get. And I you know, Roddy, let me add to that, too. Hold on for a second, Matt, while you think of uh, something to add to our drug conversation real quick. Uh, let me add to that, Roddy. You are extremely respected uh, among my generation of wrestlers, and I know for a fact that it's on a level that you don't even know about. Sabu was telling me one time <clears throat> that you guys all walked into a, a dressing room, and this was uh, a few years ago when uh, me and Sabu were there in the ECW, and all these young kids that came up 
from uh, OVW, all these kids that are just starting out, and, and we gotta, you know, we gotta make them look good, and uh, you know, during the fucking live TV and all that, all these kids come up and they all took the chairs, and nobody had a chair for Roddy, according to Sabu. This is his story, and uh, and and Sabu said that he went and got a chair, you know, made someone get off it or something, and brought it over to you. He said you were like sitting, uh, maybe even outside the room, like you just said, you're a lone wolf. Uh, and, and there was like no room, and he like he was like really offended by the fact that these young kids, uh, you know, had, had had no respect like that. And he got you a chair, and you know, said, "Please, you know, here, sit down." And um, anybody, you know, from my generation in, in wrestling looks at you as one of the original legends. We all started watching wrestling with you, and me personally, I can, you know, I'm glad I just thought about this. The, the very moment I can remember being interested in pro wrestling was when. Uh, wrestling crossed over into my world because my mom's talk show was showing footage of you and Mr. T and, and some midgets, and, and that was the first time I can remember ever seeing wrestling, and from that point on, boom, that's what I was going to do. Uh, you know, that is a true story about Sabu. Not only that, he grabbed my bag, and he got me, boom, and he got me settled, and then he went and got me a soda pot, and he said to me, in my generation, we take care of our guys. And then I believe he went into that room and explained as only he can do. And it was very, very kind. I never come into a dressing room. Uh, I'm, I'm just one of the boys, you know. Uh, but I love you guys. You know, I know what you're going through. Uh, and I love you a lot. And Sabu uh, and yourself, Rob, you, you come from that generation that I have, I have as much respect or more than you do for me. And uh, just like when you would ask me, I'm not doing any press right now. I've been asked a lot. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. But when you called me, you're worth it. Sabu's worth it, you know. And those are the guys that we kind of look at and want to say, hey, come over here for a second. Listen, man, if you just take this guy like this and go like that, you would, you know, and just maybe give a plan or or share some ideas, or, or be a sounding board. We die for, for you guys to do that. We want, we want, like, you know, Flair and I, we sit in some place, and we'll see something, and we just, we're saying, oh, man, if you just moved a bit to the left. But it doesn't always happen that way. Um, and I, I don't know how to fix that. But I'm always there for anybody, and no matter who it is, uh, if they need a sounding board. I think it's my, it's my duty, man. It's my duty to pass the torch the right way. And when we're talking about drugs, it's my duty to say, yeah, hey, they're made to help us out. Like you say, it's abuse of drugs I am dead against, man. And I, there, I ain't no secret to nobody. Uh, you know, I, I've rolled hard. But I also have four kids. And nobody's ever lifted a hand in my house. Real important. Um, and so I've heard of roid rages. And I, I think that roid, roid rages depends on the person, not to minimize the gentleman I heard that was being so honest and, and sincere about a roid rage. I, I myself, I don't think I have ever had that. I, I, I kept under control, uh, especially in my house. But uh, then again, please, you know, I got big black wings on the end, uh, big black, big, 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 big black wings. Uh, and there's a there's a movie I don't, uh, I don't know if you have seen this or not, Roddy, called Bigger, Stronger, Faster. A great documentary on uh, steroid use done by Chris Bell, uh, and it's a story, very honest story about his two brothers who were using, and uh, one of them just happened to use steroids, but mostly he was doing everything and always felt like he was second best and like drove himself nuts. And on the documentary, you know, his dad even says he thinks he's going to lose him someday. Uh, we all knew him. He wrestled, you know, with uh, with us sometimes, and he passed away like a couple of days after this documentary came out. Uh, something to do with uh, I don't know alcohol or or paint fumes. Um, but anyway, uh, that said, bigger, stronger, faster. I highly recommend it. It's a great, great, honest uh, documentary, as good as any Michael Moore documentary, in my opinion. I wish the Bell family would have got rich off this, but but you know they did not. But it's available at Blockbuster and on Netflix, and everyone should watch it that has not. Matt Denton, you're still online. You want to say something before I let you go, Matt Denton? No, no. Well, I, I, you know the, if you just called to say that. Um, I can't thank you enough. 
I would make all your dreams come true, Matt. <laughs> Wow, way to turn that around, and I almost said, you dumbass, you don't got nothing to say, and you totally turned it around and made, <laughs> made it a good call. Matt's a regular. Uh, that was awesome uh, for him to say. I'm just joking, uh, Roddy. You know, Come on, laugh. Now you're making me feel uncomfortable. That back, back, way back in the day when Zahorian, let me tell you about testosterone. When yes. testosterone uh, first, not back, we're talking, oh, my goodness, 81, 80, something like that. Uh, when you got a bottle of testosterone, you opened the leaflet that came inside it. In a large black writing in this box around it, the first thing it said was, this does not enhance athletic performance. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> right. And so and it's just the mentality of the people at that time. You're lying to us. So then we, we didn't believe anything you said. Like if you were talking really, we just we completely went into not to denial because you lied. So then it almost became, well, they don't know what they're talking about anyway. Let's roll. Right. They, they continue to lie to us about all drug classifications. You probably don't know this, but um, maybe you do. But marijuana is classified as a Schedule One controlled substance by the uh, federal government. Schedule One meaning no medicinal value and the most dangerous uh, to your health and most addictive. That's marijuana, heroin, acid, all of Schedule One. Schedule Two meaning more medicinal value and less harmful is uh, meth and cocaine. Believe it or not, that's our federal government guidelines. Well, we need to fire those folks. <laughs> I uh, know. Uh, we got a new attorney general, Eric Holder, um, that Obama appointed. And uh, because of his announcement in uh, February, federal law now complies with state law on the medical marijuana issue, which which is huge, especially when right now we're talking about legalizing it to uh, stimulate the economy of, of the country. California would lead as we are leading in uh, heading towards bankruptcy as well. Uh, if uh, if this goes through in the spring, then marijuana would be a legal option for anyone 21 years or over, estimated to bring in about a $2 billion surplus to the state of California. Boy, uh, you know, they're not going to stop. They, the indefinite pronoun, the law is not going to stop. As in prohibition, uh, as you were mentioning, if, I, if I'm, I may, I'm pretty sure I'm correct on this. When they started prohibition, they just mixed marijuana in with alcohol and the whole bunch, and they said, okay, boom. And then America, you know, did the great uh, revolution. The only thing that they didn't do was throw tea in the Boston thing. And they, uh, all of a sudden they got so angry and so many murders, oh, sorry, it's legal. <laughs> uh, but they left marijuana out. Uh, and that's also another one with the government is uh, – so – Let's put right right now. I'm selling you uh, some whiskey, and I get caught, and they throw me in jail for two years. And tomorrow they decide it's 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 over. It's not illegal anymore, and I'm still in jail for two years. <laughs> That's what we have right now. We've been res arresting eight hundred thousand fucking Americans a year. Uh, for marijuana, like 88% uh, of it on pure, simple possession. Uh, a lot of those people get arrested and, you know, get out. A lot of them fucking stay in jail. And, yes, what happens to everyone that's still in jail first, they should all get let out. But how does that work when you change the law? I don't know. Allie from New York, you are on RVD Radio. Hi, Rob. How's it going, guys? Um, Looking yeah. off. <laughs> Listen, I want to congratulate your wife, first of all, for her battle of cancer. Now, um, I heard uh, through you guys, I mean, from my boyfriend, he's a big fan of ECW and everything. Now, I'm very interested in this topic that you actually implemented on bringing marijuana from the black market to stimulate the economy. I think it's a very good idea, and with the facts behind it, it actually could work. Now, on the facts on the situation of use versus abuse, um, now, the reason why marijuana and other substances aren't legalized is because people can't regulate it. People don't know how. Some people, And the reason before that is because doctors don't even know how to regulate it. Now, 
if people actually knew how to use these drugs, like some people can actually do, like you or some other people, I mean, it would actually be instrumental instead of detrimental. Now, the reason why they don't know how to regulate their drugs is because doctors don't know how to regulate their drugs. And the reason why doctors don't know is because they're controlled by pharmaceutical companies who is controlled by the American Medical Association. Um, I did a lot of research on this. My dad was diagnosed with colon cancer six months ago, so I went into all different researches on non-toxic therapies because, um, as you can see, uh, all there is for, for cancer is chemotherapy, radiation, and um, therapies like that. They don't mention anything, any type of drugs, which is actually from the earth, actual organic drugs that can help these these cancers, these diseases that are actually not curable to this day. The reason why they don't do that, I don't know. The American, Mer uh, American Medical Association as well as the National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, all these things, they control the whole situation with banning these drugs from, uh, from the media. So, of course, the media, I'm sorry I'm talking a lot. Do you have anything to say? I, I feel like I got oh, you got, no, you got You have a lot to say, and uh, I'm, I'm down sorry. with <laughs> The main thing that needs to change is, yes, uh, research. We don't do research on marijuana because Harry Anslinger banned all future government funding for research back when Mayor LaGuardia decided he wanted to do his own test on marijuana in 1941. The uh, LaGuardia Commission is a report where he um, disputed all of the claims for on marijuana. He says it isn't dangerous, it isn't addictive, uh, you can't overdose. If you smoke too much, you might go to sleep. Uh, there's no evidence of all these kids, you know, uh, getting latched onto it. So Harry Anslinger put a fence around the LaGuardia Commission report, although you can still Google it and look it up for yourself right now, the LaGuardia Commission report and uh he stopped all future government testing you know there was a short break there with i think with papa bush where they started a program where they were uh, growing marijuana for a, a few patients and right and they they stopped the program right now they're waiting for those patients to die off uh last okay. i knew there was five left one of them Irvin rosenfeld is very vocal about sharing the fact that why they lock people up in federal prison, uh, they, they still grow and mail him marijuana because of his disease with uh, bone spurts, little bones that stick out and cause a lot of pain. So, you know, there's a lot of hypocrisy there, and you're obviously on your shit. You had a lot to say, and uh, appreciate your call, Ellie. Ellie right, or Ali? And, um, yeah, I'm actually going to be at that reunion tour on uh, June 27th. If you and your wife are going to be there, I'll be glad to talk to you more about this. Okay, right on. Whatever. Are you going to uh, be there? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but no. Uh, <laughs> all right, no. great. Well, uh, well, thanks for having me on, and I would definitely love to talk to you guys soon. Right on. Okay. That girl had her stuff together, Roddy. Yeah, she did. If you know, if you're, you, if you're throwing up every morning, um, you get a whole different sense of life. Uh, myself, I was bleeding... Um, yeah, I, I had no problem with this. I was bleeding every morning in the toilet, and I was throwing up every day, and I never missed a gig. At uh, three, just a second, two weeks after I had my uh, a disc removed and a, uh, um, a spine mass removed, and then the radiation, two weeks later, I was doing a movie uh, for MTV called Sweet 16. Every morning for about seven months, I got up, I threw up, and when I went to the bathroom and I bled, and there's the pain pills that they give you, that it doesn't work. It just gets you constipated. And if you find a medication that works uh, to stop that, I mean, it's unbelievable how it takes over your body and ruins your family. I'm talking about the, the effects from fighting cancer. Uh, it's like, are you kidding me? If you can give somebody an organic substance that helps them through that every day, what is your major malfunction? Maybe you should get cancer and start throwing up every day and bleeding in the toilet while you got four kids that you're feeding, never missing a gig, and see how you think about it. There's a lot of do-gooders, a lot of pharmaceutical don't want this because they have a huge 
you know, uh, market cornered and, and all this, but I say to them, I say, you throw up every morning, you bleed every morning, and you feed four kids, and you stay a martyr and don't use a substance that eases that, that through that, excuse me, that eases you through that period of time. I don't know anybody that wouldn't take it. I don't know any. I consider myself a pretty, pretty devoted professional wrestler. Uh, I don't miss shots. Uh, if I give my word, I'm there. But it was hell. It was hell, and there was nothing that our medical professionals could do for me to ease that. There was only one thing, and that was illegal. I don't give a damn what it was. When you're bleeding and throwing up like that, and I can't let my kids, you got folks out there, when you're a dad, you can't let your family see that. I did a conference with uh, dads that had cancer, and I went to them because they said that dads don't ever talk about it. And there was about 32 people in the room, and I, I wanted to know. And what they all said was, well, if I let my children and my wife know about it, I shake their foundation because I'm dad. And I went, holy cow. And that's why men don't, don't talk about cancer because of the family. And I kept it away from the family. And I'll tell you this, when I, uh, when I had to tell my family that I had cancer, and this, this is a, <laughs> I just tell the truth, man. I was in room 930 of the uh, St. Vincent's Hospital. And it was a Saturday. And I had uh, my daughter flew in from L.A. All my kids were there. And they come in. And it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And great-grandma had a little something that happened to her. And I, I got to make her room up. I don't know what it was. 4.30, we'll say. And I didn't know what to say to the kids and what to do. And I said, well, why don't you go down and see great-grandma? And come back up and see me. They'd love to see you. So she goes, they all go down and see great grandma, and she dies in front of her. Oh. Uh, they all come back in in tears. Uh, Holy cow. So wait, I got to get off because, and their dad's got needles in his arms and oxygen and all this other stuff. And I got four of the most beautiful kids and wife in the world. And I'm going, wait a second. I need to get out. Because without dad, the youngest ones feel, they feel their foundation shaken. And there's nothing I wouldn't have took to help me fight through that, through that period to feed those children. I didn't take it because I, I wanted to take it. I took it because I had a family to feed. And I'm not a martyr and don't want to be a martyr. So that's the God's truth, straight up, man. And I challenge anybody, I challenge anybody, you, let me see you do that for seven months and never miss a gig and never complain about it. You throw up while you're looking in the toilet full of blood every morning. Yeah, good luck, Rainy. Yeah, well, thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing that honesty. Uh, David from Sacramento, you want to take Roddy's challenge? Sure. No, nah, fuck no, you don't, man. No, wait, man. wait, wait, wait yeah, what, this, what? No, I know. I, I threw you off there. He didn't mean anything by that. But anyway, yeah, you no threw shit. Me a curveball. Yeah, David, you're on with uh, RVD, SVD, Rowdy, Roddy Piper, and our official law representative, Officer X, all online at the moment. How are you doing today? Right now, I feel like I'm not worthy to talk to Hot Rod, man. That is. Not just it's AI. Shit, ain't it? Fucking yeah, yeah man. Roddy, 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 Roddy Piper on RVD Radio. Believe that? That's amazing. That's amazing, man. That's very. I, cool. I'm just like whoa. I mean, like ever since I was a little kid, man, I, uh, I'd watch Saturday Night Main Event and like just see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, that was the shit. How old? How old are you, David? I'm gonna be 21 in August. All right, cool. So you just graduated high school uh, recently, so you you're probably way more current on what they teach you about drugs than I am because I went through that shit in the '80s, and uh, you know uh, I'm sure a lot's changed since then. What, what did they teach you that marijuana is uh, five times as bad for you as cigarettes? 
not really. They didn't. They didn't really focus a lot on drugs when I was when I was in school because that was three years ago. You didn't have a health class. Did you have a health class? Yeah, but they they for some odd reason they didn't focus a lot on drugs. I mean, they talked about it, but it wasn't a like they focus more on the body and everything and what they they it's basically like they hide it. That's cool. Well, you know, yeah, that's not cool, you know, but I, I hopefully they're not lying to you. That's what I get mad at. Um, you know, talking about the body. The first time I remember uh learning about drugs was in health and fitness class, which I loved that class, but the drug that I the drugs that I learned about uh were everyday drugs. And Mrs. A, that's her name, she uh, she was saying, you know, don't become, you know, don't get hooked in the cycle that everyday people are when they get up and they have to, you know, and then they drink the coffee, you know, and then they and they have to, sometimes they take fat burners or some kind of uh, upper stimulant, whatever, and then at nighttime, you know, the you know something to make them go back to sleep. But there she was talking about like everyday people, you know, not people that are that are doing, um, you know, harder drugs, but talking about like uh, nitol. Um, um, all over the counter shit, you know, and coffee. You know, I remember because I drink coffee. I love coffee, and I always think about that. I think back to Miss Miss Andershack, Miss A, uh, uh, telling me not to dig get in that habit. But damn, I love to have coffee when I wake up. I love to have it before I work out. They were just like everyday drugs, like uh, you know, like alcohol is getting to be. And speaking of alcohol, Sandboy, you finally made it to RVD Radio. Yo, what up? <laughs> What's up, Sam, man? How you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm, do- I'm doing good. I wish I, I came on and I, I didn't get to hear uh, Rowdy's whole, uh, whole story about throwing, uh, throwing up and stuff. Throwing that's, up why it's a, that's why it's an awesome thing that RVD Radio is available in archives. See? We're cool like that on RVD Radio. RVD, motherfucker! Uh, yeah. <laughs> now your day's going well. Yeah. Good. Yeah, life's doing really well. I mean, how's your family doing? Uh, awesome. Everybody's doing great. Everybody's I mean, healthy. Kids are, kids are huge. That's you know, great. My, I got. I have another. I have a nine-month-old now that I just got to sleep uh, about a half hour, forty-five minutes ago. But he he liked to sit with me and watch uh, the Lakers against uh, Denver for a while. So. <laughs> he, I can't sit there and watch uh, baseball with me or watch anything with me. You know, one of the things that curtailed a lot of my drinking was my kids. I started love. I love my kids so much that I came to uh, you know every once in a while a moment of sobriety, and it was so important to me that at home I, I don't drink at all. Um, you know, I'm, again, I, I got wings. I was just kind of giving you a little. Roddyism there, I suppose, for lack of a better word. Uh, I kind of I understand that definitely. Um, when Tommy Wildfire Rich came into my uh, at one of my houses in uh, in Florida, he walked in and he opened up, he opened up the refrigerator and he said um he said he said where's the alcohol? And I said I said I said I don't I don't drink when I'm at home. I only drink when I'm on the road. He said get the hell out of here. He couldn't believe it. Anyway, he wanted to storm out of the place. Dude, you know, you need a license to hunt, a license to fish. Any jerk can have a kid. It takes a man to be a father, and you're a man. I know Tommy Wildfire Rich real well. I love him to death. But, you know, a lot of the things that happen, especially in our sport, uh, business and professional wrestling, we've got such a black cloud for all this for fellas that have made uh, honest mistakes that aren't here with us anymore. But we all, some of us have learned from that. And one is Rob, but that's why he's talking about this on the radio and invited myself. Uh, I'm proud of you. Uh, I'm proud of you not drinking at home. I'm proud. Hug those kids, man, because they grow up and they're real. Alcohol is a coping mechanism. That's what I say. Dude, his kids have already grown, grown up and out, and he's already got another couple started. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. man, and, um, from 22 to 9 months. <laughs> Dude, so you're ready to pop, huh? I got a nine-year-old with a Mustang. Nine months. I thought you meant she was nine months. Never mind. I'm I'm retarded a little. I got a 19-year-old with a Mustang. You could have for a while. I want him originally, but uh, you could have him right now. 
Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, though, with the, especially with alcohol, I, I just I think alcohol is way worse than um, uh, that marijuana is. I really think alcohol is a gateway drug much more than, than people used to say pot was. Yeah, and, you know, I was told that they came up with that gateway theory by asking people that did other hard drugs, did you smoke marijuana, you know, or ever before? And, and they all said, or enough of them said, yeah, to, for them to clarify, okay, it's a gateway. But they don't ask them, did you drink alcohol first or cigarettes first because of governmental misclassification. That way, you know, uh, they – they control the cigarettes and alcohol and make the big uh, kickback off of that and don't have it classified as a drug per se. But we know by definition they are definitely drugs. If they're going to if they're going to come down on one, you know, it's uh, the mad mothers against drunk drivers. I, I couldn't live with myself if I was drinking and hit some kid. Holy cow! Oh no you shit! Know, so I'm such an such a booster of that. And that's what we're talking about. I've never heard of anybody, uh, anybody doing that uh, while they were smoking marijuana. Right, and here's the thing. Now, a lot of people will, will take that specific point as the point of argument. They'll say, well, driving while you're intoxicated or while you're smoking is irresponsible. There's never been terms set for what is responsible tokage, and you have to decide, you know, before you can say this is irresponsible because otherwise, you know, it's not, it's not considered responsible to stand there and light up in public a joint, but it is cigarettes, you know, and so you can't really say where the irresponsible, responsible line is, but I do know this, uh, experienced smokers, uh, marijuana smokers that smoke around the clock all the time, they can drive, uh, you know, while they're smoking, no problem, it's because they're used to it. Uh, I'm going to let this next guest on, because I'm glad he called in, big, big, big actor, and when I say big, he's like 6'10", at least 6'8", I think you're 6'10". I don't know. You can tell me. But uh, this was the big bald dude that uh, George Clooney had beat him up in Ocean's Eleven. And I kicked his ass on the wrong side of town. What up, Scott Schwartz? I don't remember anything like that ever happening, man. Uh, I guess I don't either, now that I think about it. Drink hey, how tall are you? That movie's actually on right now on TNT. Dude, really? you know how that shit works, Stan boy. Yeah, I was watching it. Uh, I was watching the beginning of it. I was flipping between that and whatever the Lakers and the Denver game was. I had a commercial, so you're spot All right, this goes down in my here. book, then. I just decided today I was going to start documenting that shit again. Well, you know, i got to tell you something. Everybody that's listening out there, i got to, you know, I was, I was watching Dude, I can barely hear you. Oh, uh, how are you? Can you hear me now? Uh, kind of. Well, I'm on one of those wireless earpieces because I'm complying with the law, and I want to make sure that I don't uh, drive and talk to my cell phone at the same time. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, so back to what you were saying. I just want to say that um, I've worked on a lot of films. Anybody that wants to look up my website can look it up at www.ultimatebadguy.com, ultimate bad guy, one word. But i got to tell you, um, I worked with in Wrong Side of Town with RVD, and a lot of fans out there don't have the opportunity to spend uh, every day and every night with uh, Rob. And I've known him for a couple of years, and I'm proud to call him a friend. And just being on the set with him and being able to talk about the business and being a, a very cool, down-to-earth guy, uh, it's, it has to rank as one of my favorite sets, aside from the mosquito bites. One of my favorite sets of all time, and Rob is definitely very cool. I know Roddy. Um, just you guys are really great, and I just have nothing but respect for you guys. That's it. I just wanted to say that, and um, that's it. I'm, I'm happy to be here, man. I'll be derailed. Yeah, right on, dude. All right. So uh, we can hear mostly what you're saying. You just kind of sound like you're in a spaceship. Uh, but, yeah, thanks for saying that. It was an awesome experience. And uh haven't talked a whole lot about Wrong Side of Town yet. But people that are listening, if you haven't done this yet, go to movieset.com and then look at Wrong Side of Town if you want to see uh, some footage from the movie that I just did. They They will be updating that every week. Um, all year long, because uh, this is a four-picture 2009 deal, so every couple months, I guess, we're 
doing the next one, starting with uh, Baton Rouge for number two and possibly Costa Rica for number three, which sounds cool. I had a blast. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I didn't like seeing anything that I did, though. I know why actors now don't like to watch themselves. Everything I saw on the monitor, and, and Scott, you were there when uh, when I did that uh, parkour shit, and I ran and jumped off the dumpster and bounced off the trash compactor, and, and then I climbed up the ladder. I fucking watched that, and then I was like, oh. Man, I could do it. You know what? I didn't watch it on any freaking monitor. I watched it live, and it looked fine to me. It looked great to me, and I wouldn't be putting yourself down because maybe I'm going to just kick your ass, and that's going to be the end of it all. But no, <laughs> you're, great. you're very talented, and um, it was a real pleasure to, to be on the show. Uh, man, it was just great. Every minute. Right on. Well, uh, listen, uh, I don't know. I think we'll, we'll keep you on that long since you're on your uh, headset, but you have to contribute to the topic of drugs. You've been in the wrestling business for a long time, uh, way before me, and you've seen a lot in and out. Is, uh, is proper usage uh, okay? Because uh, I know that drugs are basically good, and uh, people that abuse them are doing bad. People automatically think drugs bad. Were you one of those people that took pride in the in just, you know, staying away from ever, you know, using anything, even if it would improve the quality of your life? Well, you know what, Rob? Uh, you asked me this question on the set, and you told me I'd be on this show, and frankly, I was a little nervous, and I said I'm not an expert on that, but it's common sense, and, you know, I thought a lot about it, and I thought about what I was going to say, and, you know, years ago, uh, there was something that they were selling at 7-Eleven called Joke Cola. And these teenagers were going in and drinking it and then drinking another one and drinking another one. And they were having heart attacks from it. Anything that you take in, in life in moderation is going to be fine for you. I've had several surgeries. You've had surgeries. There's a place for drugs to make sure that you don't endure any kind of great pain. And believe me, when doctors told me what bones they were going to grind and what muscles they were going to cut, and, and they said, listen, we're going to give you a little something to take the pain away. Let me tell you, I was in La La Land, and you know what? I was a guy on the road that, that took aspirin, never took drugs. I was a guy on the road As who never drug. drank alcohol. Aspirin is huh? a drug. Aspirin is a drug. Well, but you know what I mean. It's a very menial, uh, very light drug, medication, a couple aspirins, but uh, I never went overboard like a lot of these guys, but you know, you're right, there is a need, a need for medication for drugs, and there, there, is, there are certain illnesses that you can't get uh, rid of through rehab, or you can't get rid of through counseling, or whatever they do to you, uh, you know, um, a, a massage is not going to get rid of a broken back. Um, uh, you know, uh, that's right. therapy. Huh? <laughs> that was my Fonzie soundbite. I said, That's right, Daddy. <laughs> but I actually have the real life Fonzie right here, so I don't have to do that. That was, <laughs> we'll bring him in. What up, Fonzie Daddy? Hey, Daddy. Man, I have so many callers on right now. It's like an all-time record, but I'll try to get to everybody. But, uh, Fonzie, you're on with the rowdy one, Roddy Piper. I know you know that guy. I was with him. Uh, we shot an alligator in, uh, in the early 80s. Frank Dustick, Kevin Sullivan, Bill Alfonso, Hot Rod, Roddy Piper. We were diving from Tampa to Miami, and... Uh, and uh, and Piper was uh, not used to seeing alligators all over the place, so it was his first trip down, and he was freaking out, having to go, oh, my God, there's an alligator, there's an alligator. So we were driving for about an hour, spotting gators all over the place, and Piper said, man, I wish I had a gun. Frank Dusick says, well, I got a little thirty eight in the trunk, so we pulled over, and uh, the alligator was about 40 or 50 That's yards right, on the other side. And it was a potluck shot. Oh, my God. Nobody ever thought that Piper was going to hit the alligator. So Piper had this old 38, took one shot, bam, hit the alligator. And the alligator went into convulsions. And and, and he kind of rolled over and, and rolled into the canal. Now Piper says, man, I want to go get him. So Piper takes all his clothes off. He's got his underwear on. 
Uh, Kevin Sullivan is down to about 50 feet away trying to distract the other alligators because it was infested with gators. So Piper starts swimming across the canal to get the dead alligator, but the alligator was working. He was alive, and, and he starts swimming. He starts swimming towards Piper. Piper, you know, everybody's freaking out, and Kevin Sullivan says, "I don't see the gator no more." And you know, what a hell of a nice story, but. Um, I don't think there was any drugs involved, but we might have been uh, smoking a doobie. I don't know. Holy shit. Dude, you're hilarious. It's so funny, and I've heard that story from both of you guys, from both sides. No, brother, I love you so much. Um, I hope you and your family are doing great. That alligator story, I wanted alligator boots. Uh, and uh, and I've, got, I've got my family. i got a roll. But for you to come on, and I'm a big fan now of you, Rob, and what you're doing. One of the things that you said that was really makes a lot of sense well, is, could you tell us what the rules are? And somebody stand up and tell us what the rules are. Exactly. Uh, and I, I think that's great. Alfonso, I love you to death. And, Rob, uh, you're wonderful. I, I really have become a big fan of yours. Uh, See you Hey, that man. Uh, are you powdering, or are you just putting I, us over I, right I, now? I got my kids, and, and uh, uh, dude, well, hey, thanks for being on the show, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, it's like one of the best shows ever. Hey, brothers, uh, man, an Irish poem. For those who love us, may God bless, and for those who don't, may God turn their hearts. And if He can't turn their hearts, may He turn their ankles so we recognize them by their limp. <laughs> right right on. Let's That's take one for the Irish. I, I love you all to death. Thank you for giving me the honor of being on the show and help support. I would love to come Thank on. Thank you, Hot Rod. Much love from everybody listening. God bless you all. Man. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. Cheers. Awesome. How cool is that, baby, having Hot Rod on the show? That was really cool. Fonzie, you're <laughs> also on with SVD. What's up, Fonzie Daddy? Sweet daddy, hey Indian princess. We also got this man, the Sandman. You know Sandman, Fonzie? Yeah, yeah, I had my own room in his house for two years. Uh, yeah, hell yeah, I'm a Sandman. Uh, Fonzie, you wouldn't believe it. I'm I'm only about 110 miles from you right now. No way. Where you at, Orlando? Yeah. Go see him, man. Go see I'll be here next Monday. Go see Fonzie and uh, Scott Schwartz. I don't know if you can still hear us. Can you still hear us, dude? I can still hear you, man. I'm going to have to sign off. And um, it was a great pleasure to be here. Hopefully we can do it again. Um, I'm going to give back a call, man. You're great, and there's nobody like you. And uh, you call me anytime, and I'll be on your show. Awesome. Thanks, man. We're going to we're gonna have dinner with the ladies real soon, man. Thanks for being on the show. That was big Scott Schwartz. Not the little dude. Big Scott Schwartz. Uh, awesome dude. He was on Wrong Side of Town with me, Fonzie. What a blast that was. Uh, you know, a movie starring RVD. I was the big star, you know, so like when it was time to break for lunch and everyone would get in line to, to have the uh, catered slop, I'd say, hey, uh, you, I want a filet mignon, some tuna sashimi, and I'll eat it in my trailer. It was awesome. It was like really cool. And the uh, best part is uh, I'm already going to be rolling into part two. So it's not like I gotta wait and see how this does to see if I can do it again. Uh, I don't know, man. I'd rather be doing uh, action movies than than wrestling for a minute. So it was uh, it was really, yeah, it was a cool experience. Sandboy, you have your own show on Blog Talk Radio. Let's plug that before we forget. It's tomorrow. I'm gonna be on it. Uh, it's three o'clock my time, six o'clock East Coast time. You said you're doing a show on marijuana, so I gotta be there to educate. Uh, do you know the uh, blog talk address by any chance? I'm guessing no. Uh, Rob, you know me. I wouldn't know that stuff. I but, uh, know. Nikki, like blog my... talk, hold on. Blog talk radio producer Nikki, uh, you you can get that information, right? Sandman's uh, talk show? Yes, I'll get it. I'll put it in the chat room. Put it in the chat room, but also uh, right. tell us listeners because people archive it and they can't see the chat room. I know. Well, I'm looking for it, and I can't find it. Um he it's like uh, something Sandman. spiritual, some spiritual shit, like uh, can't we all just get along or <laughs> something? I don't oh, know. Come on. 
I don't know. Okay, well, you'll find it. You'll find it. Okay. And it's on Blog Talk Radio tomorrow at uh, 6 o'clock East Coast time or Eastern Standard time. I like East Coast because I like West Coast. Um, so also, I'm waiting to get the ID on that one on caller 15. Uh, now, ooh, maybe I can go to a caller really quick, man. I have so many fucking callers. Let's go to this one right here, Justin from Louisiana. Right? Is that Louisiana? Or L.A., yeah. L.A. Where in Louisiana? Louisiana. I'm, I'm Louisiana, man. Where, dude? Louisiana. I know, but what city? Or what, oh, what, what uh, parish? Alexandria is uh, Bulls Parish. Oh, okay, yeah, I know where that is. Uh, One man gang lives there. Oh, you know what, Fonzie? Uh, um, show. That's yeah. You know what? I I I, kept the, I ate at the Cracker Barrel a lot when I was when I was there. I, I, that was, I was there for three weeks shooting RVD TV. Uh, no, fuck, shooting the movie Wrong Side of Town. I just got back Saturday, and I'll be going back there for part two. Anyway, I ate at Cracker Barrel a lot. There's no Cracker Barrel here. I'm a big fan. And so I like Cracker Barrel. And they were buddies with one man gang. They said he's working at a prison or something. And I wrote like a hello to him and said sorry for breaking your leg. Well, I believe he did a show uh, last weekend. It was, uh, I think, it was old school wrestling. There's a lot of uh, wrestling promotions down south in Louisiana. Right on. Well, uh, yeah, I haven't seen him in a long time. But I'm I'm familiar with uh, Alexandria though. So, so anyway, thanks for calling in. I think you're a first time caller. Uh, Roddy just left, but you're on with Fonzie and uh, Sandman. Scott Schwartz just left. Uh, if you hold on, I think someone else called in, but I'm waiting until Nikki tells me who caller 15 is, and I already sent her on another hike to get Sandman's uh, <laughs> show name. Uh, but anyway, we're talking today about drug use versus abuse. Do you have anything in mind that you'd like to add? Because I know you've been listening for a while. Well, I guess I really don't have a point of view because I've never really used drugs or anything. I mean, I fool with Beer what about medicine. okay? When you're sick, do you, do you take cold medicine? I take a you know an Iquil or something, but I mean I, uh, that's a drug, brother. That's true. Uh, I guess I say you know underground abusive quote unquote abusive drugs. Okay, well that's it. I think there should be a line you know drawn, and people automatically like like you did. You know when you said I never use drugs. They think of drugs as just being bad, just something harmful, and drugs are very helpful. Drugs are good. Thank God we have drugs in our society, or my wife might not be alive. Uh, fuck, maybe none of us would live past 30 or 35 if we didn't use uh, medicine, and, and that's all drugs, you know. It's all in uh, use versus abuse. People that abuse drugs, well, they're abusing. What the fuck they expect? But... Drugs themselves aren't bad. It's the it's the people. Officer X, I swear you are not on mute. Say something. Am I? Wait, let me play Officer X's music for him. <laughs> Officer X. I guess the best ring. I get the best entrance music. How fun. Beautiful, Daddy. Yeah, but you know what, though? It's not just alcohol and drugs and stuff. It's anything that people can abuse like you were getting. I mean, look at these people you see at the country buffet that are 500 pounds that are eating themselves to death. (laughs) Abuse of anything, that's right. Uh, Speaking of which, when we were in France, there was only one fat guy, and we were there for almost four weeks. We only saw one fat person the whole tour, and that was our ring announcer. There was not another fat person in the whole country that that we saw. It was crazy because they eat bread and cheese all day. It was crazy. But let me go to the next call because I don't want to keep her on hold forever because she rarely does interviews that I know of, and we get the superstars on RVD Radio. So let's welcome Lita. What up, Lita? Hey, how are you guys? (laughs) Awesome. I haven't talked to you in forever. Yeah, I know. I don't do interviews, and I don't return phone calls either, so I'm kind of bad about that. It can be a recluse. Once you get out of the, you know, off the stage, it's kind of, I think I went, like, the exact opposite way to, to like, super reclusive, but I didn't turn to you. (laughs) Dude, that's awesome. I didn't heal. I I don't have heat with anybody. I just, like, (laughs) kind of, like, hang with my my neighbors and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, just kind of, like, super mellow. I totally know what you mean. Like I, uh, yeah, I 
when I left WWE, I didn't care if I ever wrestled again, if I ever flew anywhere again. I just wanted to be home, and I still don't answer my phone if I don't if I don't know the number. I have Sonya answer the door because I don't want people saying, "Oh, RVD, you live here?" Like everybody doesn't know, you know, the pizza guy and everybody in their second. Anyway, I totally get it, and I've told Sonya many times recently. The more I study people. Uh, the more I realize how different I am, like I feel like I'm a different race than, than all these sheeple that I watch all the time. I told her I'm going to be like Howard Hughes and, and be a recluse when I'm older and just lock myself in a hotel room for a few years. I can see it totally. Like it's like a, a different species. Like I'm like, I guess my brain just doesn't work like theirs, and it can it can be taken the wrong way as being being a bitch or being rude. I'm like, no, nah, my brain just doesn't compute like yours or whatever, you know, so... Yeah, the only the only way I can ex- understand it, the only way I can grasp it and have any comfort is the fact that we're all wired different. You know, I mean, some dudes like fat chicks, some dudes like dudes. You know, it's like, I mean, we're all we're all wired to see things different, and our and we all have our own perspective, and that's the only comfort I have in the fact that everybody else can be so stupid. All the time, you know, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm just very thankful to be one of a kind, and it's not just because I do wrestling moves that nobody else does. I study people, and I swear that they don't like to think, and I think that is my greatest asset is that I think about stuff. So that's why I have my blog, RVD TV, RVD Radio, Lita, welcome on for the first time, Sandman, welcome on for the first time, Fonzie, glad to have you, and Officer X, you have an appearance that you want to plug with Lita for this weekend. Yeah, I, hey Lita, how are you? Hey, what's up, <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, we're going to be doing the Legends of the Ring show in Monroe, New Jersey, Saturday from 12 to 3. Please come on out. Please come on out. What, did you fucking read that? You sound like you were reading a prompter or something. I'm thinking, man. Not, not everybody. What? Just, my, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Officer X, where's that at? Where's that location at? What, 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 uh, that's this weekend, this Saturday? Monroe, New Jersey. Well, where, where, is it at Armory? Where's it at? You just get to Monroe and you just say, hey, where's Lita? <laughs> oh, that's the easy spot. I'll sign an autograph, yeah. I'm telling you, my, my cannabis challenge friend is fucked up. <laughs> All right. I'm glad you uh, went at the info because whenever you're plugging uh, that blog, I was like, oh, I came on the show and I don't know where my appearance is. So, uh, okay, somebody's got it. It's in Monroe, New Jersey. I, I'm flying into Newark. It can't be too far from there. So if you're in that that's area, funny. then come on out. She's as bad as I am. Like, I didn't even know the name of my own radio show. I know. Too too many chair shots with this crew. But I knew you weren't going to know your show, and I thought that I would have it in time. But uh, I think that uh, Nikki, my uh, producer, is looking for it. Ooh, there it is. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, The Sandman, your show, which will be on tomorrow at uh, 6 o'clock East Coast, 3 o'clock my coast. Starring RVD, I don't know who else you got on, but I'm going to talk about marijuana for a second with you. Uh, it is blogtalkradio.com slash the Sandman's Last Call. Whoa, wait, is all this shit in there? Do I got to put uh, 2009 in? No, that's the date, 2000, March 28th. That's tomorrow, or May. It's May, whatever. Okay, the Sandman's Last Call. That is his show. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. She's type. She's, uh, I am reading this. And I don't, and I'm pulling it off more naturally than you, Officer X. But uh, www.blogtalkradio.com, The Sandman's Last Call. That's your show tomorrow. And it's like what show number? Epi- oh, I just lost my fucking screen. It's like episode number five, right? Where the fuck did my screen go? Sandboy, it's next to the water blong. Your uh, your episode. That's all he says. What's that? I was doing my, my water boy imitation. Mom always says, <laughs> I, 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 my kids watch, my, one of my sons will watch that movie like, like at any time it's on television, my 10 year old son. So I end up like watching it with him sometimes. And You're lying. Honestly, I never appreciated it until about the 50th time I watched it. And man, I think it's pretty funny. Okay, well, there you go. Hey, Lita, you heard our topic uh, for a second. Uh, what, what do you just think about I'm just going to ask you. If, do yeah. you really talk about the topic, or do you guys, guys just kind of like <laughs> you know, man, catch up on the old times and stuff like that? It's, it's, it's a little, uh, it's a little of everything. You're welcome to check out the archives. It's always, it's always a good time. <laughs> um, 
it's uh you know it's been the spine of the episode we keep going back to it you know and i mean i've i've been on here for an hour and 43 minutes talking about how drugs are good they help people that's why we take them they're here to improve the quality of life to make us live longer healthier people uh misuse them that's what drug abuse is people that abuse drugs are doing bad but the heat always goes on the drugs you know and a lot of times wrong wrongfully so because uh like marijuana who's never hurt anybody is classified as one of the most harmful drugs we have in cigarettes and alcohol which kill more people than anybody people don't even think they're doing drugs if they're doing that which they are you know so i know you got to have an opinion my, my from an opinion outside is probably outside. like a, a different perspective than, than maybe um you know it's probably the norm and i also feel like it's, it's i've done a lot of thought on it more being away from such excessive drug use as, you know, as I was around. Um, I, I feel like it's not like, no, I don't think it's the drugs, and I think things have a place, but I feel as though there's not enough emphasis on mental rehabilitation and, and mental evaluation. Like, you have to understand why, what's causing you to want to do drugs all day? What's causing you to want to black out from alcohol? You know what I mean? Like, what are you trying to hide? Why are you not happy in your life? You know, and people need to, to look at things from that perspective. I mean, talking about drugs that people abuse. I'm not talking about, you know, um, cancer drugs or strictly med medicinal drugs. But drugs that are commonly misused, I feel as though, are commonly misused and abused because people are trying to mask things that they're not happy about in their own life. And if they could be introspective and reflect on their own life and their own state of being and, and who they are and what they stand for, then they maybe don't want to hide that so much with the, the, the abuse of drugs. Very well put. Very well put. I'm going to let uh, Juan from New York talk real quick. Uh, you got a minute. What's going on, Juan? Hey, what's going on, Rob? Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Really enjoy the show. Hey, man, thanks. Appreciate that. You called it a good time. You got Sandman, Fonzie, Lita, not to mention SVD. You still here, man? Awesome. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, all right, so your opinion real quick, man. Uh, it doesn't matter what your perspective is as far as uh, if you're coming from a user or a watcher or even just, you know, something that uh, you picked up that uh, well, that you learned, you know, that you can share. With, you know, we're talking I mean, about drugs. I mean, well, Rob, um, drugs have have the effect on my life, and in a, in a bad way, both my parents were um, her her heroin addicts, actually, and I lost both of them to overdose. Wow, that's right. So heroin is one of those drugs that I wouldn't think of as medicinal. You know, it wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know too many things that a doctor recommends heroin for. Yeah, um, I mean. I don't know. I mean, the base of it that, that, that's used to medicinally wise, not like the like the way we use it on the street. You know what I mean? It's the opiate, right? right. And just just from that, I've had this um, I had this thing where I didn't want to be like my parents, so drugs would always kind of scare me away. You know, I kind of just stood away from the pot and all this other stuff. Um, I actually work in a pharmacy. I'm a pharmacy technician. Wow. And okay. I de I deal with people every day that come in and. They, they want, you know, drugs, heavy drugs, you know, like um, like the oxys and, and things like that. And you could tell the people who abuse them from the people who just take them regularly. The people right. who abuse them would have a script and it will be probably like a 90-day supply to be back a month later. You know what I'm saying? And then, yeah, um, believe me, I, I know people that would go through a 90-day supply in about two days, you know, believe me. Uh, and, but, uh, yeah, man, I'm sorry to hear about your parents, Juan. Uh, thanks for sharing that story with us. No problem. It's just, you know, it's, it's a very, you know, it's, it's serious, you know, with this you know, drug use. And like I said, I don't know much about it, but I, I try to learn as much as I can about it, you know, about pot and, and stuff like that. And I know it's, it's very helpful to people. I have a cousin uh, – my uncle actually he has a uh, bone cancer and he, he uses it regularly and he helps him so hey you know if it helps it helps you know as long as he's feeling okay and he's able yeah to yeah the main, the main problem with that is that they uh misclassified and they put marijuana in with the most dangerous most addictive and non-medicinal drugs 
and uh, that's just a, a misuse of classification to justify bullshit jobs. Dr. Sean Stasiak, uh, one of our many, many guests we got on the return of RVD Radio. What up, Dr. Sean? Brother, I'm sitting here sweating my ass off in the sauna waiting for you to finally take my call. I've got my cell phone in my hand on speaker. My, my phone is so damn hot, my hand's burning. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, I'm glad you called in. We only got a few minutes left to the show. Uh, we had Piper on earlier uh, and Scott Schwartz. They're no longer here, but uh, we got Lita, we got Sandman, and we got Fonzie. And Lita never does interviews, so time with her is very special. Well, hey, Lita, hey, Sandman, hey, Fonzie. I just want to make one point, though, real quick, and I'll, and I'll uh, bail here on this. But uh, as far as the drug situation, you know, there is a difference between use and abuse. Uh, drugs could be classified as uh, sex, food, excessive working out, drugs, alcohol, you name it. It's, it's an addiction, and it's really what Lita was saying earlier. She touched on it perfectly, is that it's, it's people who have deep voids and unfulfillment in life that are looking for ways and escape. That's it. Mm-hmm. And there is a physiological addiction when it comes to painkillers. You mentioned about heroin be in well, where's its place remember that all Vicodin Oxycontin all those um, painkillers are a derivative in the family tree of an opiate which is indeed in the family of heroin so just a tidbit you know why I know all this Rob because I'm Dr. Sean <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I thought that uh, I wasn't sure about that uh, about the painkillers all being from a family uh, of heroin uh, but that's what it you're is. saying it's all, right? it, it's all derivative of opiates and it has um, they're all connected in some way, not to the extreme of heroin, of course, but um, it, it's a chain link, and they are in that family. So, just what's the difference so, between like hydrocodone and oxycodone? Two opposite opiates. Uh, you know what? That's a good question. That's a good question. I know that oxycodones are, or codons are much harder to get. I think it's a class one drug as opposed to a class two, or, or it's one step above like a, a Vicodin. And I, I don't know why. I think it has a different mechanism in the way that it works with the brain and the central nervous system. And I think it because it has more of an addictive property to it. Uh, that's probably the, I don't know the scientific breakdown of it, but I could always find out. Well, Sean, you can see Lita this weekend at uh, Monroe, New Jersey, Saturday uh, something something. What is it, off Strix? Legend, www.legendofthering.com. Hey, Brian, you've had, or Dr. X, why do I always call you Brian? You've had your 30-second promo. Come on, let's do it right, baby. Let's do it right. Where is Lita going to be appearing this weekend? Say the whole thing. Go. Monroe, New Jersey, from noon until 3 p.m. at the Legends of the Ring convention. Yeah. What time? <laughs> and oh, we can sorry, I told you. Awesome, dude. Hey, okay. hey, let, let's, hey, let's get back to this Oxycontin one thing. That is the worst stuff in the world. I spent two and a half years working narcotics work, and every heroin addict I met started on Oxycontin to Percocet. Every single one. It's terrible. And they could change Oxycontin. If they, they need to make it tamper-proof, so if you cut the pill up in half, it doesn't have that properties anymore, but they won't do it because there's too much money in it. Yeah, the uh, um, Percocets are given um, to people that don't have, uh, that don't receive uh, Vicodin well. The the, the painkiller uh, narcotic in a Vicodin is hydrocodone. Some people, it upsets their stomach, so then they get a Percocet, which has oxycodone. Percocet is usually 5 milligrams. You might get 7.5 milligrams of oxycodone in a Percocet. The Oxycontins that everyone like Rush Limbaugh uh, gets addicted to are supposed to be as strong as five of those regular Percocets for one. So if they're taking ten of those, that's like taking 50 fucking Percocets. I'm telling you, Rob, that, that Oxycontin is the most evil shit in the world. I've seen nice, nice people. They start taking that stuff for back injury, knee injury, and they're stone street junkies in no time. Bad, bad stuff. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, that's right. for terminally ill so people. That's it. Addicting. Excuse it's me. So much more physically, it's so much more physically addicting than like that. that like, like say, say marijuana, for instance. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mar- marijuana does. It, your body doesn't like Jones from marijuana like it does with oxycontin. When you're on that we're gonna, cream, we're gonna have fun on our show tomorrow, Sam man. Bobby D, motherfucker. That's right, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. All right, Aid, I went to another call that's been waiting a long time. It's Eric from Canada. You're on RVD Radio, eh? Hey, Rob, how's it going? Uh, fucking awesome, uh, man. I don't got much time left in the show, but I got a bunch of awesome guests. If you want to shout out real quick, we got Lita, we got Fonzie, we got Sandman, we got Officer X, 
and SVD. Oh, Dr. Sean Sasiak is still on the line, too. Can you believe it, man? How's that for pressure, man? That's who's listening to you right now, man. So what do you got to add to the show? Go. Fucking A, eh? I'm just joking, man. Are you, are you with me? Eric from Canada, don't go out like that, man. Hey. Stage fright all night. Now you're sure. Oh, you know what? He got muted. Sorry, that was, a, that was I don't know. I must have too many callers on. Let me try this again. What's up, Eric from Canada? Thank you for calling RVD Radio. Okay. Uh, this goes in more with the uh, cancer uh, conversation earlier. Yes. And uh, recently I've come across author uh, G. Edward Griffin, and he writes a lot about the Federal Reserve and the American government, but he also writes a lot about the alternative Canada, uh, cancer researches. And he professes that cancer is caused from a uh, vitamin B17 deficiency. And uh, he has a book called World Without Cancer you might want to check out. Yeah, well, thanks for bringing that to our attention. Do you have a boyfriend? I do. Where did that come from all of a sudden? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, you flirt? Uh, Dr. Sean, are you asking uh, Eric from Canada if he has a boyfriend? Because this is not. No, I'm the... asking this. Check this out. I'm at 24 Hour Fitness. There's this hot chick that I've talked to for about a month. And why is it that they always flirt around, but when it comes right down to it, they have a boyfriend? She's talking to her boyfriend. I don't know. I guess that's for a different show. Uh, we got yeah. five minutes left here, and uh, I better go to another call. Pick a call, baby. You want to pick a call? Pick a call. Pick a call. Pick a call. Pick a call. That one. Oh wait, that's Sandman. Okay, um, <laughs> let's go to Cody from California. Cody on RVD Radio from California. Uh, city. What's up, guys? What's up, uh, Cody? Not too much. I had a question, just a little off subject. It's uh, I just started. We could venture. What's up? I said we could venture off subject. Go ahead. Oh, I got you. Uh, I've been training to be a wrestler for about four months now, oh, and uh, I'm kind of up to hip tosses and whatnot, and I'm just not planning myself right, not, you know, launching myself up. I was just wondering what exercises you'd recommend to kind of help me get that extra height I need. I recommend you don't go to college. <laughs> okay. I'll write that down, man. Awesome. And uh, and you want to get height? Is that what you said? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, like, when I'm doing my hip tosses and I'm doing the move, I'm only getting maybe three feet in the air, and it's, Kind of ruining the move, you know. <laughs> so with your, use your right hand and post off the guy. Uh, post off the guy who's hip tossing you. Post off yeah. the knee. That might help you get some height. Yeah, I've been putting my almost, you know, my entire weight on him, and the leg and the left or right arm, and I'm not doing it. You know, just my legs. I'm not getting that spring. You know. I mean, ask, a, ask ask a trainer if they know what a lunge. If you know, if they can explain to you what a lunge jump is. Oh, oh yeah, that's what we've been doing. My, my trainer is actually um, Gangrel, Orlando Jordan, and uh, Black Pearl. And they, oh, oh, man, ask them, dude. They can help you. They can help you, man. Good luck with that, too. I only got about two minutes left to the show, and we can't spend it teaching him how to do a hip toss. Lita, what have you been up to, anyway, <laughs> out of the spotlight? Uh, actually, like, just recently, I started doing yoga about in 2002 when I broke my neck, but I'm getting a lot back into that and just um, – being really, really mellow, been doing it around my house. We're getting ready to go back on tour July 1st in Europe for six weeks, so that'll be back in the craziness. So it's like I'm kind of just chilling out with that um, impending madhouse going to happen starting June or July 1st in uh, the UK and uh, over in Europe. Right on. Well, hey, do you got any like uh, anything else to plug besides your appearance? Like if your band has a website or anything? Yeah, um, you can just go to luchagores.com, or you know these days, if you just Google luchagores, it'll come up, and our my, MySpace and stuff, we always put all of our uh, stuff up there. Um, I was thinking about maybe doing like a, a tour blog, like a tour journal on, on my MySpace too, um, but and now that I've said it, that'll make me do it, because I'm kind of bad right with like, these ideas, and then once it's spoken, okay, there it is, I'll be having a tour blog on my MySpace starting July 1st. Why, why, why do you start tweeting, Lita? What don't what? Do you know what tweeting is? The oh, Twitter. yeah, tweeting I've heard, I've heard of that? this. You can uh, do that. Right, right, right. Because then you only have to write like two sentences or something, right? Yeah, you'd be like, hey, I'm in this, you know, I'm in this country, you know, just got just got off the stage, end the hotel, kind of stuff like that. That's yeah, I Twitter, I, 
follow zero. I don't follow anybody else, and uh, Nikki gets on me about that. She says at least follow, uh, at least follow me and your wife. But no. Hey, uh, Brian from New York, you got thirty seconds. What's up, dude? That's me, right? Yep. That's All right. Oh, hey, real quick question. First off, honor to talk to Lita, Fonzie, Sam, and RVD. I'm a you know back in the day ECW fan. I'll be at the Please. Legends. Of the, I'll be appearing at the Legends of the Arena show in Philly, June 27th. RVD, will you be there? Lita, will you be there? Sam, and Fonzie, I know you're already booked for the show. That's my question. I uh, I will not be there. Uh, Lita, will you be there? I will not be there. Fonzie, will you be there? Yes. With that, man. Hey, you got a yes. All right. Well, there you go, man. All right, no doubt, no doubt. I appreciate the call. Uh, great show, guys, and take care. All right. Cool. Thanks, man. Thanks for everybody being on the show. Uh, Fonzie, Daddy, thanks. Good to have you on, as always. We. Thanks, Daddy. Yeah, Stan, man, thanks for coming on, and I'll talk to you tomorrow on your show at uh, 3 o'clock my time, your 6 o'clock your time, uh, the Sandman's Last Call at Blog Talk Radio. Officer Rex, thanks. Uh, Lita, thank you very much for making a very special exception to be on RVD Radio tonight. You're yeah. awesome. We've always thought so. And... Anything? Oh, go ahead. You were going to say anything. She was going to say anything for me. I'll say it for her. That's cool. And uh, that's our show. Say bye, baby. Bye, baby. Bye. Everything that guy just says bullshit. Thank you. Pete Joe, Daddy. Thanks.